Hello and welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez and I'm joined once again by Jeff Mall from the Convention of Visitors Bureau. Hard to believe we're already into the end of the year holiday season. Looking at this list, it is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And but we got to get to Thanksgiving first, and some arts and crafts and theater. That's right. We got a lot to talk about. We do. Let's get started, and we're going to start at two of our favorite places in Lincoln. That'd be the Children's Museum and the Children's Zoo. Tell yeah. us what's happening at the museum. Lincoln Children's Museum Holiday Spectacular and Family Funtacular: Carolers, Candy Canes, Tinsel, and Twinkling Lights. Of course, an appearance by Santa and Major Drummond. Major Drummond from Star City Holiday Parade fame. Thanks. It's good to see him. It is. Thanks to DLA and Go Lincoln Go for helping make this event happen. And they'll have a new story time featuring the Polar Express and the new BNSF Railways exhibit at the Lincoln Children's Museum. And don't forget the grand finale, the light show. The light show. When sure. was the last time we had a light show in Lincoln? Outside? Inside? Outside? I don't know. Should be a lot have of fun. Have to go and find out. Tune in. All right. And if you want to head outside, go to the Children's Zoo. And a few days after the museum, head to the zoo for their uh, winter Zubilee. <laughs> a holiday train ride, hot chocolate, and a visit with Santa as well as zoo entry. Tickets are on sale now. All right. Capitol Tree Lighting is an annual event, and it's always fun to see them squish that big <laughs> Christmas tree through the Capitol doors. You go top first, right? I. I don't know. I would assume. Maybe not. Maybe pull in the big anyway. I don't know. This will be a great chance to hear some carolers will be assembled and singing in the holiday rotunda. The lighting of the Christmas tree, which will actually stay decorated until just before New Year's when the next legislative session will begin. All right. Another beautiful event at the Canard House, which is the oldest standing structure in Lincoln's original plat. That's at 16th and H, that beautiful house there. And as Lincoln's Convention and Visitors Bureau Director, I do know that fact, but All it right. amazes me how many people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. And it's right there. It's a great location adjacent there's a, to the Capitol. There's a picture on the website of the Canard House with nothing around it. Yeah. Yeah. When it, that was it. That was it. So it's a lot of fun. Head over there to uh, enjoy a Victorian Christmas with a lot of great decorations. All right. If arts and crafts are your deal, then uh, there's several events to go to. The first one at Trinity United Methodist on November 17th. Great opportunity to buy something else. Somebody put a lot of hours and time in. A great arts and crafts fair with over 40 vendors and artisans selling goods all the way from handcrafted jewelry to small wood furniture to handmade items for kids and babies. All right, and then the week after Thanksgiving, if you don't have your Christmas shopping already done, uh, Craftacular, the fifth annual holiday shopping event sponsored by the Lincoln Arts Council. And who needs online shopping when you can actually walk right up and walk away with some great art. 43 artists on hand at this event. An appearance by Mrs. Claus giving Mr. Santa Claus a break as well as the silver tones. All right. Now, if you're one of those people who likes to make your own holiday decorations, there's an event for you coming up the 24th at Pioneers Park. This will be at the new Prairie Building at Pioneers Park. Create wreaths and holiday centerpieces. What it says here is a pickup load of pine and cedar, pine cones, ribbon, candles, and much, much more. Baskets, coffee mugs, and a few straw wreaths on hand. If you want to bring your own stuff, to have like the framework to decorate with. They have all the great goods there, so great chance to kind of decorate for the holidays. All right, a different kind of wreaths yes. event coming up at Waiuka. Um, they're going to lay the wreaths on December 15th for the Wreaths Across America event. Yeah, and you said over 1,500 military graves we were talking prior to this at Waiuka. And uh, great chance to have 20-inch evergreen wreaths with red bows placed on the veteran graves. A great event, over 741 locations nationwide. Waiuka says they are the only cemetery in Lincoln to participate. That's right, and it would be nice to have a wreath on every one of those 1,500 graves. So if you go to the website, find out how you can participate in that event. All right, a, uh, a really fun event at one of the most beautiful places in Lincoln, and that would be the home of Jack Salzman, decorated for the holidays. Apparently I'm missing something if I haven't had to been to his home yet. Should be a lot of fun. This is a chocolate party, a great fundraiser for the Fresh Start Home. FreshStartHome.org if you want to learn more about this great organization that benefits a lot of great homeless women. And Jack does a great time of hosting benefits for lots of organizations. Yeah. So thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. All right, let's get outdoors and put some bells on our shoes and take off. The Arthritis Foundation's Jingle Bell Run and Walk for Arthritis. Thousands of runners and walkers wear holiday-themed costume tying jingle bells to their shoes. A great 5K, a one-mile run, a lot of great kids' activities. Bring the whole family and benefit the Arthritis Foundation. All right. Now, if you don't want to participate in Black Friday or any of that hullabaloo, you can head out to the Advent Center and watch some go-kart racing. And I think you hit the key on that. The women will be out shopping. The guys are going to be sitting around going, what are we going to go Not do? Not necessarily. The guys go too? Sure. I better 
change. Huh? <laughs> this is the Turkey Jace Indoor Go-Kart Racing. Over 300 drivers from across the Midwest competing for prizes. Lancaster Event Center inside. No worries about the weather. This will still happen. That's right. You could probably pick up some souvenirs too there. If sure you, you could. Do some of your Christmas your shopping, shopping at the go-kart races. Right. little All dirt. Right. Love it. <laughs> Let's move on to some music events now. And there's an opportunity to see one of the up-and-coming pianists in our country. Yes, this is a cooperative effort of Sheldon and the Lincoln Arts Council bringing pianist Adam Tendler to Lincoln, Nebraska. He most recently uh, brought a lot of modern American music to underserved communities in all 50 states. He's also the 2012 American Pianist Association Classical Fellowship Award winner. So that'll be a, that's that'll a lot be of talent. A, that's a lot of talent. And you can display your own talent at the Handel's Messiah. They have a big sing-along at the end of this one. They do. Here are the chamber choir, Abed Korn, a chamber orchestra, and this Blended rendition, you can enjoy the Hallelujah Chorus. In the end, knock the walls off this place. That's Should be right. a lot of fun. Can probably hear that for blocks. <laughs> Guaranteed. Oh. A big uh, event on the opera calendar for the year is the Nebraska District Metropolitan Opera Auditions. This is a free event that you can go and check out some of the rising stars. At Nebraska Wesleyan, to say the money right there. Winners advance to the Upper Midwest Regional in St. Paul may be selected for the national semifinals in New York City. Great qualifier. Absolutely. Coco and Carols is coming up at the Kimball. Yes, yeah, student vocalists will present their annual family favorite concert at the Kimball Recital Hall. Coco and Carols should be a lot of fun. Sounds very warm. It does. It does. Also, Deck the Halls is going on at the Leeds Center. This is their annual Holiday Pops concert. Featuring actor Tim Marone performing a Christmas carol, local Suzuki music students and dancers performing the holiday classic, The Nutcracker. A little bit of everything. Yes. The Nebraska Brass Christmas is a must-see on many people's calendars. A lot of people say this is the most popular event of their year. Should be a lot of fun. All right. Let heaven and nature sing. We're going to go back to uh, First Plymouth then in mid-December for this ooh, big event. <laughs> they've expanded this year. They have. They've blown the doors off this thing due to standing room only crowds in the last two years. They've gone to two performances. Join them, as they, join them as they repeat the sounding joy of the holiday season and proclaim the wonders of God's love. All right. Let's uh, get some theater in here before we go. And uh, we have an opportunity at the Playhouse to spend Christmas with Pa, Ma, Mary, and Laura Ingalls. It'd be nice if we could order up maybe like a dusting of snow for this event. Oh, that'd be great. just sound a lot of fun. Absolutely. It's a great chance to join eight days before Christmas the Ingalls family in their home. They encounter a winter thunderstorm. Laura and Mary, of course, are worried about Santa and Christmas. Very heartwarming tale. Lincoln Community Playhouse, The Little House Christmas. All right. If you're looking for something with a little more variety, you mm -hmm. can try the complete works of Christmas abridged. This will be at the McDonald Theater. The selection of Christmas musical numbers, stories, and skits will get you in the holiday spirit. A lot of great things. I'm mean, going back through this list. We have no problem getting in the holiday spirit this time. Absolutely not. If you're looking for something completely different, right. we've got uh, a visit to the fictional town of Timberwoods, Nebraska, and the townspeople gathering for their annual holiday show on KORN Radio. Corn Radio, Diane. <laughs> this is the, there ought to be a corn radio, there should be. right? In there this should state, be. absolutely. During the program, the live studio audience is introduced to an array of colorful characters and tales and holiday songs. There's a little twist inside with the stations, informs the audience of some unfortunate news. But I'm sure it all works out in the end. It, it always does. But this sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you to Bob Rook again. I always thank Bob when I come on this show. But the variety that they put on the stage, the variety that we have across this community in our theater environment is just amazing. That's right. And this is a collaboration with NET Radio. Should An be a lot of fun. An original theatrical production, so uh, could become an annual event. I hope so. All right. Well, Jeff, let's tell people where they can find out more about all the great events going on in Lincoln. You can give us a call at 434-5348, which is our visitor center, our main office, 434-5335, or log on at lincoln.org. Print off the great list of events that we talk about. Stop at our visitor center at 7th and P. And, uh, We'll make sure and we'll keep your family busy this winter, this oh, winter season. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Jeff. Another local theater that's keeping very busy is the Haymarket Theater. And we'll check in with two of the newest staff members when Out and About continues. The reconstruction of the uh, Centennial Mall gives everyone an opportunity to participate in the history of Nebraska. And we want to take this opportunity to build it as an extension of the state capitol. When it's all done, it's going to be beautiful, substantial, 
educational, and a, a source of pride for all Nebraskans, I believe. Welcome back to Out and About. The Haymarket Theater is celebrating its 10th year and is now under the direction of my next two guests. Rob Burt is the Artistic and Executive Director and Jordan Deffenbaugh is the Technical and Associate Director. Thank you both for being here today. I know you've got a couple of productions in the works, so well, it's a busy time of the year. Yeah. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure being here. Rob, let's start with you. Talk a little bit about the history of the Haymarket and, and how it got started 10 years ago. Uh, well, originally, the program was started under the direction of Fred Stewart. Um, he was a Lincoln native. Uh, he bounced around in LA and New York for a while before finding his home back here in Nebraska. Uh, he started the program originally in 2002. And uh, his main focus from the beginning was primarily theatrical education uh, geared toward youth. Uh, because, you know, you, you don't get another generation of actors without inspiring that mm. generation in the first place. Uh, so Fred started the program, yeah, in 2002. Uh, uh, and he, he worked extensively there, I think, until about 2008. And then from there, the theater kind of passed hands uh, between uh, other, you know, very me mentionable people within the Lincoln uh, theater community scene. Uh, Bob Hall uh, of the Flatwater Shakespeare mm -hmm. Company uh, led the theater for a while there, Tom Crew as well, and then eventually Sean Schmeitz before the theater uh, passed into my hands uh, with Sean's departure uh, earlier in this year. And you did have some excitement under Tom's watch with the roof collapse. Absolutely. There was, uh, we were having some routine maintenance done to the, uh, the Huber building, which is a historical building in the hay market. Uh, but the problem that they ran into was it's a wood framed building. And as they were trying to retar the roof, uh, it caused a leak within the building itself which caused wood rot and that's what eventually caused the collapse of the ceiling. So the, the theater was kind of out of commission there for a little while while that uh, issue was being repaired. But all's well that ends well because now it's a beautifully renovated space. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are back in full force. All right. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about your theater backgrounds. Jordan, tell us uh, what people may have seen you in or seen productions you've been involved well, with. Well, um, I was at the university for about uh, five years uh, since graduated. Uh, there they would have saw me in Lady Weird Windermere's Fan. Um, I was D'Artagnan in uh, The Three Musketeers just this early this year. Um, I was in Closer with Rob mm -hmm. here at the Haymarket. That was the last acting thing. But most of the, most of the stuff that I do is generally directing uh, for the most part. Uh, like I did uh, Killer Joe with Rob, mm -hmm. who was Killer Joe, uh, and uh, also did an adaptation of Dante's Inferno at the university. But most of most of what people will probably see me in is things like at the university or uh, any directing projects at the Haymarket, which like Mulan Junior, like Mulan Junior, mm -hmm. like uh, oh, let's see, Twelfth Night, uh, like. Uh, Treasure Island, uh, Annie, which was our big, big musical mm -hmm. from this past year. We also both made cameos in The Hobbit when we, we directed made. that. <laughs> <laughs> I climbed a pole and <laughs> jumped down during a giant <laughs> goblin battle. Uh, and uh, but then, uh, yeah, it, most of, most of what I am experienced in is actually more technical and directorial theater. Um, I do act, but. That's kind of my focus. Again, Rob, you're familiar to uh, audiences who see Flatwater Shakespeare. Yeah, uh, I worked extensively with Flatwater Shakespeare from 2004 uh, up until about 2010, I believe, was the last uh, Flatwater show. Nope, oh, nope, that's not true because I did Midsummer over the mm -hmm. summer. But I, I did work extensively. Like I was, I was kind of, I don't know, one of their core players for for many years mm -hmm. there. Uh, and then before that, I had done a lot of work at. Um, the Link Community Playhouse. I started in a production of Alice in Wonderland there, directed by Paul Pearson in uh, 2002. I've done Pinewood Bowl as well. Uh, under Fred Stewart's direction that time, mm -hmm. I was in uh, West Side Story and Fiddler on the Roof when he did both of those projects there, respectively. Uh, and I suppose most recently, uh, my work around Lincoln has been in Closer, uh, once again with Jordan, mm -hmm. uh, Charlie's Aunt, which we put up in February uh, mm -hmm. just before that. Killer Joe, uh, Milk Milk Lemonade. I don't know. We're we're kind of people who pop up in odd places, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. At, on Out and About. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about your two main programs now. Mm -hmm. The Nebraska Youth Theater remains at the heart of your mm -hmm. mission. Jordan, do you want to talk a little bit about what's going on with the with the children's program? Well, I think the big thing that's happening with our children's program is um, 
we're, we're starting to develop a very like a, a pretty good following and uh, I think it's because the approach that Rob and I take is um, more of a collaborative effort with the kids we're like we, we are teaching them we are enriching them and all like everything you expect from a theater uh, a youth theater program but at the same time we try to work on their level and like understand like what do you want to do as a kid like what do you do you want to just do some old 1940s musical or you want to do something new something fresh and something that like say Lincoln audiences have never seen before and that's kind of I think the direction we're taking it um, and the kids are getting really excited about it they they love the shows that we do, and they have a great time doing them. Um, and I, th uh, I think it's, and we also like we when we work with them, because of like uh, the experience I've had as uh, an actor, as a director, um, I we tend to push them and get them to uh, like to be more uh, theater artists than just like say a straight performer. Or mm -hmm. I just do tech, or I just. I just do musical theater. Like, no, they're more well-rounded and like understand all aspects of theater and well, just the craft itself. Yeah. Tell us about your next production. It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. It's based on the Frank Capra movie. It's a straight adaptation, mm -hmm. um, and it follows George Bailey as he goes through and goes through uh, his life and how he affected people. And um, if he wasn't there, it like. He wouldn't have made those impacts yeah. on, on people's lives. And it, it's a very, uh, it is our f regular youth show. And it's, I mean, it's he very heavy, uh, I guess, uh, social commentary. It's heavy I guess. subject matter. Heavy what subject matter. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, for kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let the kids get it. Yeah, yeah, the kids get it. And I think, I think they, I think they understand it, and I don't think we should shelter them from like things like that. Well, know? and the approach that we've really started to take, uh, especially with uh, some of the original adaptations that we've been mm -hmm. doing for the kids programs, uh, we've been looking at uh, particularly uh, classic literature that has fallen into the public mm -hmm. domain and is therefore kind of up for grabs. And it really allows us uh, like a lot of great things because one, it gives us a a show that has name recognition already. Then. But then on top of that, because it's in the public domain and can be altered, it allows us to to tailor the, the script itself then to the kids that we're working with, which makes it an even more kind of interactive experience for them because we are in, in a way tailoring this this character or this role to, to the kid and kind of their personality and kind of what we see uh, their strengths as being. Um, and when it comes to, uh, to children's theater in particular, I think for too long, kind of the rationale has been, you know, oh, it's cutesy and it's fun. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, and it can be those things. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what I found with, say, adapting Treasure Island mm -hmm. or most recently The Island of Dr. Moreau and or Night, Night, of, the Living Night <laughs> of the Living Dead um, <laughs> is that Zombies. kids very yeah. much want to tell a story. They want to tell an adult story. And, they, and, they, and a they, good story. Yeah, like a, a, good a, story. Full, mm -hmm. a full story with fully developed themes and things that like we would expect from just going to a normal straight play that like say Angels Theater Company is doing or Flatwater or mm -hmm. LCP or any any theater in general. They don't want something that's watered down. They want something that has something, a story to tell, mm -hmm. I guess is the way to put it. Well, let's talk also about the the adult theater, the, mm -hmm. the professional theater that, that ha the the Haymarket has done for most of its existence, yes. I think seven yes. of the ten years. Tell us about The Four of Us that's coming up. Uh, the Four of Us is uh, it's a play by Itamar Moses. It's directed by Bobby Bonaventura, who has been wonderful in, in working with us. He's actually directed the majority of our main stage season this year. Um, but The Four of Us uh, revolves around uh, Benjamin and David, who have been friends since they were in high school. And one is a playwright and the other is a novelist. And it's kind of about this this rivalry that isn't really acknowledged between the two of them as they, they try to continue on through the years uh, with their friendship. But you know, one of them is immediately launched a success and the other one is left trying to deal with his envy and possibly even his resent me, uh, resentment then for uh, his friend. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a critically acclaimed play. It's, it's very warm, it's very heartfelt. And at the same time, it, it deals with... Uh, it's got a bit of an edge. Yeah, it it's, definitely does. It, it's not like, it's not your happy-go-lucky kind of like friend story. Like it, they go, they butt heads. Yeah. And it, 
it's vicious at times. Yeah. Well, it yeah. sounds yeah. It sounds great. Again, the four of us is November 15th through the 24th, except for Thanksgiving night. There'll be no, no show on Thanksgiving. And then It's a Wonderful Life on stage at the Haymarket, December 13th through the 22nd. Again, the Haymarket Theater is at 803 Q Street. And the phone number 477-2600, haymarkettheater.org is the website. Before I let you go, just talk a little bit about the community support that makes so many local arts organizations work in town. Absolutely. I, well, I think especially now as we're kind of seeing um, arts programs disappear from public schools across the country, is it, is it vitally important then for a nonprofit theater uh, such as ourselves, such as Angel's Company, such as Flatwater, be supported by the community? Because I mean, they they truly are who support us and and who, you know, uh, I don't know. Well, I I, I think that um, with uh, just going off of that uh, with with arts in the schools and things, there I mean, it's being cut left and right. I mean, just all over the United States, and I think organizations like the Haymarket. Um, allow for kids to have a place where that can grow and nurture. And um, I mean, it's, it's been proven in study after study after study that theater can help the mind of the child develop. They become more outspoken, they become more open-minded, they become more aware of the world, they become more uh, empath uh, empathetic. Uh, they, they really, uh, like, and I've seen it with, our, with kids, I mean, We've had kids come in that have uh, somewhat trouble, but then they come in and they, they, they do the shows and they become more well, well-rounded, not just like artists, not just mm -hmm. actors, singers, they just become more well-rounded human beings in general. So. They, they find a home and it's always yeah. uh, quality productions at the Haymarket Theater. Again, haymarkettheater.org, the phone number 477-2600. Rob and Jordan, thank you very thank much. You. And so uh, much. we'll look forward to seeing more shows. All right, thank you. Tom Lorenz will join us from Pershing Center when Out and About continues. Hi, this is Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy. Did you know that proper insulation levels can help reduce your heating and cooling costs? You can check your attic insulation level with this very advanced high-tech tool called a ruler. Make sure you have 14 to 16 inches of insulation for maximum energy efficiency. It'll help reduce drafts and allow your heating and cooling systems to not have to work so hard. Think of it as saving money by the inches, you know, $1, $2, $3, you get the idea. For more ways to save, visit les.com today. See you next time. Welcome back to Out and About, and Tom Lorenz joins us now from Pershing Center. And let's talk, first of all, about Three Dog Night, a big, fun show coming up the 8th. Is it, it is. selling well? It's really selling well, and, it, you know, it's a great act to have here. I don't know if you know that between uh, 69 and 74, they had more number one hits. They had 21 consecutive top 40 hits. So for them to come here and play at Pershing, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, thanks a lot to Steve Glenn and his associates for bringing it here, and uh, we're just looking forward to that show. You'll be able to sing along with every song. You bet. There shouldn't be anything that you haven't heard before. All right. And the Cornhusker Marching Band invades Pershing on the 7th. That's going to be loud. They're one of the <laughs> oldest marching bands in the nation, and you know, to be able to bring them inside, um, they alternate between here and the lead center, and uh, to hear them inside, hear all the, the songs all the way through, it's going to be great. And, and what an awesome group of uh, great musicians. All right. A sort of holiday event. <laughs> this just cracks me up. Seasons, beatings, mixed to martial arts. You know, you, you've got to have, in every event, there's <laughs> got to be a little bit of uh, holiday parting in it. And, uh, and so uh, MMA, uh, we're working with Disorderly Conduct now. These guys are great. They've helped us book a lot of our past shows and, and as far as book you know, getting the, the fighters lined up. And uh, so we're looking very much forward to working with these guys. You know, in seasons, beatings, you know, <laughs> every, you get all parts of the uh, holiday. This That's way. right. Something a little more traditional, right. a lot more traditional is the Elks Christmas Party, 105 years. That's yeah. amazing. You know, what a great organization that continues to look at, you know, helping children and helping families. Um, you know, for them to come in, put on this great event, lots of kids from the community get to come in, and this is really one of the highlights of their season. Um, so it, it's a very nice afternoon. Doors open at 1 o'clock, and we hope a lot of kids get a chance to come down with their families. All right. Oak Ridge Boys Christmas Show is going to be a big one. 40 years of hits. You know, Dwayne, Joe, you know, William Lee, 
Richard, those guys have just been outstanding over the years, and uh, we were able to contact them, and they had an opening. We we're really glad to bring it back here to Lincoln. Not only will they do some of their old favorites, you know, I'm sure you're going to hear Elvira somewhere over the evening, but they'll also do a lot of their Christmas hits. This is a great show, and tickets are selling well, so I encourage people to, you know, kind of get on that. They'll get a little closer to the stage that way, but it's a wonderful show. Now, if you're looking for something to do with the little ones over the holiday break, there's always Sesame Street. You know, Sesame Street's a standard here in Lincoln. We get to do them every year. We moved them into December this year. It was a nice time for us. The play zone is back. That's that area ahead of time where you can take some pictures and interact with uh, some of the, the sets and those type of things. But, uh, you know, we got four great performances. Um, and it's always, you know, you can never go wrong with Big Bird and Elmo and Cookie <laughs> Monster and all the gang. So. All our favorites. All right, the Wheeze Tones and Soul Dog are coming back for New Year's Eve. Yeah, we did a, a, a show with them last year on New Year's Eve, and it sold great. And they had a blast, and the bands came together at the end. And, and so we wanted to do it again this year. Reserve tables are all across the floor. We had the tables sell out last year, and so now we made the entire floor reserved. You can sit up on the sides for a, a general admission seat. Um, you know, we provide some food and some, uh, some beverages and, and lots of fun. And it's just a great, nice evening. And, you know, people dance. We had the video camera on everybody. It was a, and, and those are two really, really good bands here in Lincoln. Very, very fun to dance. And they're talented and there's great people in there. So we look forward to that. All right. The brides, the brides will be invading. Pershing on January 6th? You know, everything you need for a wedding. You know, a lot of a lot of couples get engaged over that holiday time. You know, that's mm -hmm. the time when you really spring that on your uh, significant other and talk about that. So now the next step is you need to get everything set for the wedding. KFOR comes down, we put up a lot of booths, we have a, you know, a, a fashion show, and it, it's a great opportunity for people to come down. Bring, you know, bring your uh, boyfriend with too, you know, don't just the girls come down, he's got to be part of that and so we like to see both of those things happen. Maybe you can tempt him with some cake tasting. You know, there's a little bit of that, you know, you got to plan that vacation afterwards, the honeymoon and so all those good things. All right, and also in January coming, the rodeo. You know, PRCA Rodeo is back. We're working with Wally Mossbrucker again. Wally, who has some of the best stock in the nation. We get all of the, uh, the traditional rodeo uh, events, uh, bareback, tie down roping, team roping, saddle bronc, steer wrestling, barrel wrestling, bull riding, it's all there. Terrific stock. This year we're upping some of the prize money a little bit. That, you know, that level of cowboy gets a little bit better. It's a great time and we look forward to that again. All right, we'll be sweeping out the dirt from the rodeo and getting ready for indoor football. What's new about the Haymakers? You know, that, that we haven't done indoor football for quite a few years, and, and these guys came back to us, and they had a really good plan put together, and they've got some good financial backing, so it'll be great to have football back. Lots of people keep talking to me about it. They're very excited to see them come back. Um, you know, I've seen some of their roster. There's some you know, University of Nebraska players and some players from other surrounding colleges. So we're really looking forward to that. They start in late March. We'll have six games plus some playoffs, we hope. Um, indoor football is back in a Pershing, and there's no better place to watch it because they're right in front of you, and you're likely to get a few footballs thrown at you. <laughs> All right. Sounds exciting. You have to keep your eyes open. That's right. All right www.pershingcenter.com is the place to find out about all these great events and to get tickets and show times. 800-745-3000 um, is the number for Ticketmaster. Tom, thanks again for joining us. And, and thanks. Keeping busy. <coughs> Look forward to it. All right. That is all for today's show. I want to thank all the guests we had on today. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you out and about.